Hi everyone, welcome to our channel, Rebecca Stew and the crew. I'm Rebecca. Today we'll be making one of these Dollar Tree DIY baskets with the Easter Bunny. So let's go over our supplies first. The first thing we're going to use are these clothespins. We'll need two packs. We're also going to use one of these burner covers. We'll need some floral wire, some nautical rope, one of their aluminum foil pans, needle and thread, you could either use this straw or their um, decorative moss. We'll need some carrot picks, a pack of carrot seeds, which is optional. We'll need some ribbon, and we'll need twine. We will use a few buttons and one of the spray bottles from the Dollar Tree, as well as one of their large rabbits and some craft foam to fill the basket. Any foam will do. We'll need some water and some tea bags. We're also going to need some hot glue and a pair of scissors. So let's get crafty. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to start boiling our tea. We're going to use 15 black tea bags and one quart of water. We will um, bring that to a boil and let them steep for about 15 minutes. Then strain out the tea bags and pour the tea into the pan. Put in your clothespin to give them a stir occasionally, and you will want to let these soak for at least 15 minutes. You do want to make sure you can stir them every once in a while to make sure all sides of the um, clothespins are evenly coated. Once you're done with the desired shade, you'll just pull those out onto some layered paper towel or just a um, towel that you don't mind getting dirty and you're going to blot off some of the excess water and then let them dry for about 30 minutes. Now we are going to attach these to the small burner cover. We are going to just add a little dot of hot glue to the opening and then clip those all the way around the burner cover. And the burner cover will be the bottom of the basket. The clothespins will create the wall of the basket. For the small burner cover, it took 59 clothespins to get all the way around. And so you will need two packs of the clothespins because they only have 36 in one package. And 59 was a perfect fit all the way around the burner cover here, as you can see. So all of them are glued on. And now we're going to start creating our handle. We're going to cut two pieces, 28 inches long of this floral wire. I chose 28 inches just because I thought that was a decent length for the basket in the size. You can make it shorter or taller. It's really up to personal preference. You're going to take both pieces of the floral wire and just twist those together to make them a little bit more um, sturdy. And we're going to create an arc. That is our basket handle. And now that we have it shaped, we are going to just take each side of that wire and stick it down in between the opening of the clothespins. You wanna jam those in pretty far down as far as you can get to where it will stand on its own. As you can see, it goes right in between that opening. And now we're going to take hot glue and really layer that glue up and around that handle on either side to hold those into place. And then we are going to wrap some rope around this as well, which is also going to help hold the handles in place. So taking our nautical rope and some hot glue, we're just going to start um, stuffing that rope down into that opening of the clothespins there. And you wanna kind of give it a good push down inside there so that you get it far enough down that we can do a second layer. Now the second layer won't be completely down inside of the clothespins, which is okay because you're making a nice top edge to the top of the basket. So you wanna make two passes all the way around the basket, tucking and gluing the rope into the open spaces. And this is what it looks like with the rope wrapped around twice. Now we're going to wrap the wire handle in twine. So as you can see, I've got the handle um, the rope already attached to the sides that was going to be how I initially did the handle, but then um, the hot glue was just cooling down too quick on this wire, which is why I'm wrapping it in the twine. This will help give the um, rope handle something to stick to without the glue drying so fast that it doesn't allow it to stick and dry properly. So you just wanna wrap it all the way around to the other side and then tie it off. As you can see, I did that there. And then take three pieces of the nautical rope long enough to make it all the way across the arch of the handle. 
we're going to glue these three pieces together in a circle. This will be the first side of the handle. And once we have that glued into place, you're just going to put some more hot glue on the end here. Now we're going to attach this to the um, wire handle. So first just kind of get it in place and then take an extra clothes pin and clip it to the handle to help hold it in place while you secure this to the base of the handle in the basket. So to do this, we're just going to use some twine, tie it in a double knot and then wrap that twine around the lower part of the handle, just continuously working to keep it in place as you go and just wrap it around a few times. And you can even add some hot glue here to help attach it to the um, base of the basket and the handle. So as you can see, I've wrapped the twine around a few times and I just keep securing it with a double knot and then a little bit of hot glue. So remove that handle and then you can braid or twist your rope together and then you're going to secure it on the other side of the basket exactly how we did it on this side. So we're going to glue those three end pieces together once we have the braid all done and then we'll attach it to the other side and wrap the twine around just like we did with the first side. If you can't braid, that's okay. Just twist your rope together and it's just to create a decorative handle. So once I have that attached to the other side, I just slip it over the handle that we created with the twine and the wire. And that's what it looks like so far. And now we're going to take a little bit of hot glue and attach this to the handle all the way around. And that helps to hold it in place. And then just to help it make it even more secure, we're going to do a spiral twist with another piece of twine. Um, and pull tightly so that we have it nice and secure to the wire basket handle. Tie it off at the end, and that is our handle. Now for the very end of the handle where we attached everything, we're just going to wrap some more nautical rope around a few times in a circle to hide where we attached everything and just clean it up a little bit. Now we're going to take some nautical rope and we're going to do a single strand of that all the way around the bottom of the basket as well to kind of tie it all in together. And you're just going to do that with some hot glue right along the edge here and then just put your ribbon or your nautical rope here right around the bottom edge. When you get to the end, just cut off the excess and make sure your two ends meet together. That's what the bottom of the basket looks like. And we are going to create a bow for each side of the handle as well. So I just wrapped some twine around four fingers about 20 times. I wanted a rather large bow and just slip it off. And then you're just going to um, tie it off in the center to create your bow. And once you have that secured, you just want to open up your um, bow here to make it a little bit more decorative. You can cut off those little excess pieces that you use to tie it off. And then to help decorate this, I chose to use some of the Dollar Tree buttons. I chose two pink ones and I just glued those right to the center of the bows. And just attach them to either side of the basket using some hot glue. And this is what the basket looks like so far with the bows there. And now we're going to work on the bunny. So we're going to antique the bunny using the same black tea that we used earlier. It's cooled down, but that's okay. We're going to put the tea in the spray bottles and we're going to mist with water first to slightly dampen the fabric of the bunny. And that helps it not to bead up. So as you can see here, the tea was beading up on the fabric because it was too dry. So I moistened it with water and as you can see, on the back, how much more of an even coat the tea um, looks when you spray it onto the bunny. So that's why you want to moisten your fabric first. So once you have it sprayed to the desired color that you like, what you're going to do is you're gonna let it soak in the tea for about 30 minutes. Then you're either going to air dry, use a hair dryer, or just a regular dryer to help set the stain. And you do wanna make sure it's pretty dry. You don't want your bunny eventually growing mold from being left wet too long. Then using the same technique I used to create the bow with the twine, I used with some ribbon and just layered the ribbon to create this little bow for the bunny's head. I glued that on the top right underneath of the ears. 
And I chose to use a pearl instead of a button for the center of the bow, but you could use either or or leave it plain. You could even use a flower if you like. So then we're going to attach her to the basket. So I chose to do mine this way by um, just sewing her hands together with a few stitches with needle and thread. That's just to help keep her in place and a little bit more of a natural pose and I didn't have to worry about hot glue coming apart, though I did end up securing it with a little bit of hot glue at the end. And you just tie that string at the bottom into a knot and cut off the excess. Then a little dot of hot glue to her foot that is under the basket. And then a little bit of hot glue on the side so that her face stays in front of the handle and doesn't um, work its way backwards and tuck itself behind. Then I did, like I said, one dot of hot glue under her hands to make sure that they stayed together. And a little dot on the side of her body to make sure she stayed attached to the basket. So now we're going to start decorating and filling in our basket. So I have this packing foam. It was just a recycled material that I had that I kept. Um, and I just cut it into some circles. I ended up doing three layers of this. If you don't have packing foam, you can use floral foam. You do want to layer the pieces um, to fill in the basket. Now, if you don't have foam, you can crinkle up newspaper. Um, really, anything will work. You just want to fill in the baskets. You don't have to use a whole bunch of the straw or the moss because it really does make a mess the more you tend to use of those items. So just glue that into the base of your basket. You're just really filling in that space. You only have to use a little bit of straw or moss. Then you want to glue the straw or the moss all to the top of the basket there to fill it in so that it looks like it's completely full of this material. And I just use hot glue all around and to help keep it from shedding, if you like, you can spray it with a layer of extra firm hold hairspray. That works really well. Now just pull those, um, dowel rods out of these large carrot sticks and just glue them on in a couple different directions. We're trying to make this look like she just went and picked carrots from the garden. So I just glue those in a few different directions here. So those are the four large carrots and we did use one of the small Dollar, Dollar Tree carrots as well. We'll do that in just a minute. Here we just took some hot glue and tucked it right between the bunny's arms to make it look like she was holding one of the smaller carrots. Then taking one of the dowel rods we pulled out of the large carrot picks, we're just going to glue that to the back of the packet of carrot seeds that we picked up at the Dollar Tree. I put a small bow at the bottom of the stick there to decorate a little bit and then tuck that right down into the foam. You can attach it with a little bit of hot glue as well. And that's what the whole project looks like completed. I love so very much how this turned out. It's a large project. It's really big, but it's a cute display. Here's some close-up pictures of all of the pieces put together. I love that all the pieces can be found at the Dollar Tree as well. It's a lot of fun to make, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. I'd really appreciate that. Here are some other videos from our channel that you might also enjoy. I do Dollar Tree videos every Friday and crafting videos every Thursday. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.